that a lot of people felt comfortable having Kalista even before the nerfs, so that may not be as prioritized today. So Anarchy here will be starting on the blue side. CJ Ent is on the red, and there is the Rumble common ban against Shy, one of his best champions. And besides Rise, really his only big carry top laner. Otherwise, it's just tanks, tanks, and more tanks for this guy. Sometimes he works in the Trinity Force into his Shen build, so he can actually take over games as Shen. He's very on point with this Shen ultimate, so I think that's a champion that needs to be respected, but not necessarily with a ban. Speaking of respect bans, finally Coco gets the respect he deserves. The things he does on Azir, just on a different level to any of the other Azir players, and that's including someone like Faker. Yeah, I, his Azir, I think, is the best in the world, frankly. Uh, he has been absolutely amazing on that champion, but we're not going to see it, and Mickey is not going to be picking the TF early. Maybe wants to save that as a possible red side last pick. So Coco's going to be having to play something a little bit different here tonight. Now, whether that's going to be Victor, of course, he does have the Jace. And CJ as a team does like to run poke compositions. Only that's, that's really the only time when they start to look vulnerable, though. The Jace in particular, okay, we can't take too much from a game which had so many subs, but Jace hasn't really been the way forward. We suspected it, you know, we saw the Jace rework and everyone was like, all right, CJ End is really gonna be embracing that. Maybe today we'll finally see the debut of a winning Jace comp, but one thing we can guarantee, Victor available, Victor taken at first pick. Okay, but this of course leaves up that Runeglaive Ezreal. We are still on 5.13, 5 and the Braum, an easy pickup for CJ and definitely a priority for them, so. Could see the Shen taken here as well, depending on how confident Shai is in blind picking it. Ixu, a player that really prefers to go for Hecarim or Maokai. Most of his games have been on one of those two champions, and they're going to take the Kog'Maw. The Kog'Maw really high up on the priorities. Slipped a bit in terms of overall win rate, but still top five. Still a very fearsome AD carry. You know, on some semblance of flex pick in terms of uh, the poke AP Kog mid, but just not seeing that in recent match weeks is Anarchy. Where will they go with the draft? Because honestly, it's when we see Lyra on champions like Lee Sin, as you mentioned, going for that, what, 12-month-old build. It always used to be the Warrior in Chan, or whatever the Chan was at that time, into the Hex Drinker, into Sidestone. But just the early combat was the popularity. But no, sticking with the meta, Rek'Sai and Sivir are your second round picks. Yep. So not too much surprising from Anarchy right here. They're not playing one of those compositions or a mid laner that they have been strong with. It does feel that if Mickey can't kill the carries by himself, that Anarchy has a very hard time winning. And that Ezreal and the Gragas could very well come through right now. They would set themselves up with a really nice pick composition. Great synergy with Braum for triggering that passive. And then also they can isolate a target with the Gragas. So nice comp, honestly, so far. Go with the Cassiopeia, something a little bit more safe. Still works very well with with uh, Gragas, though, in that isolation. It works very well with Cogmore as well. Can, of course, just hang in the back line and peel. So we're maybe probably not going to see the mid lane pickup in this round. Runeglaive of Ezreal does loom as a popular pick. Of course, yesterday we saw a lot of Victor versus Ezreal. Feels like the matchup can go two ways, but honestly, it's on the jungle pressure that really decides that lane. Because, of course, you can wave clear as the Victor and leave lane if you have jungle pressure, if you have someone warding for you. But if you just give Ezreal a free lane, Late game as it was pretty damn strong. Hard to argue that. Hard to argue that right now. We've been teasing it, but are they going to go for it in the end? Mid lane just left alone for the time being. Interestingly, it's been a draft with a not a Maokai so far. Now, obviously, CJ has been a team that's been very competent in using the Shen. Uh, they do use the double globals quite nicely. Uh, Shy is hyper aware in that top lane of when he has to use the Stand United, when he has to go in and try and make some of these plays. Ixu's going to be back on the Hecarim. Now, this has probably been his most played. It's one of his better champions, specifically towards the start of the season. But I know you and I are both a little bit unconvinced about Hecarim. Just on patch 5.13, just after all the incidental changes, if you just add them together, you know, the home guard nerf towards the E, the mana cost for the laning phase, the fact that Cinder Hulk means that you can't just exit lane as a no escape champion and pick up farm. It feels like the reliability of Hecarim's gone down, and now you just kind of rush Trinity Force, and if you're already winning, it feels great. You have excellent burst damage from the top. But if you're behind and you're slowly building Trinity Force, we're talking about, what, 30 minutes until you're relevant in team fights? That's a lot to bite off just for a top lane. And against the composition that CJ is running, too, you're just not going to have the same effect. There's a Shen who's going to be shielding the back line, so you can't even really rely on 
the big Trinity Force burst before you get taunted and killed by a Runeglaive Ezreal and a Kog'Maw, which is what it will be in the end. So a lot of maneuverability for CJ Entis with that Ezreal in the back line, and they have an immense amount of protection. I mean, the Braum going to be able to block a lot of these skill shots coming in from Anarchy. I think this is a really nice comp for CJ Antis. And one thing we can say about CJ is that they've been drafting really well recently, really well. They've stepped up on it massively, I think. Yeah, and even comps where they can run the Echo effectively, which is still a great jungler. Now, Echo is falling down the jungle ranks a little bit because simply we're seeing fewer jungle bans, honestly, is a big, big reason because of that. This game, for instance, no jungle bans. Changed a lot from the days where we would say two, three, maybe even four bans coming through, but now, a lot more pocket bans, the Azir and the Twisted Fate. Strong champions, but not ones that we always see banned. It has to take a specific player like the Zed, too. How will this Hecarim work? That's kind of my issue, is that you see such strong backline damage between Coco and Space on the likes of Runeglaive, Ezreal, and the Kog'Maw, but how are they going to get on top of them? You can say, okay, Hecarim flanks, but they're not that reliable. And if you look down the lineup, Victor Siva, not really that strongest at turret damage because they're not that long range. There's a lot of poke damage coming through from the likes of Ezreal, and nothing stopping. Definitely not the Brom counterpick coming through. Well, also, uh, I would have taken the Maokai so I'd have wave clear pressure on three lanes. Well, we're going to get into game one, guys. CJ versus Anarchy. versus Anarchy game one. Now, as I was saying, uh, having the Maokai here would give them wave, just pressure in all three lanes early. And you know, if Lyra and Snowflower are able to play well around that, they could really do a lot of damage to the turrets before CJ was really able to ramp up into a powerful late game. But the Hecarim doesn't really provide that. Hecarim was, the top side. Hecarim was the answer to a lot of questions from the top lane in the spring season. You know, he was very good against Jogamoy, he was very good against the back line. He was so reliable, it felt, at really just hitting that 30, 35 minute power spike, specifically with Cinderhawk and taking over games. But now I kind of really try to think of questions where Hecarim is the answer to a team comp. And on one level, you're like, okay, back line threat. But just because he's so much less reliable, specifically in the laning phase, it feels like Maokai is just the jack of all trades. And the fact that he went through picks and bans, mind-boggling to me. Yeah, got to agree with you there. I understand where CJ's coming from because they are a very Shen-focused team and they play with that champion so well, but to give it up, especially since we know Ixu has his own priority on that pick, he does play it quite a lot himself. It does raise many questions indeed. So deep warding mission there from CJ into the top side. They will just fall back, looks like they have a bit of a lane swap coming through, a bit strange, since normally you would want that Kog'Ma up against the Sivir, but not going to happen in this particular game. Will we see the CJ Entis that, of course, unsettled SKT streak? They are the 1 in 21 and 1, Monte Cristo. They are the only team to have defeated uh, SKT in a best of three in 160 days. But they're a team that, you know, 2-1 against Spenu, 2-1 against SKT within, what, a week? This is the sort of team that can flip-flop and oscillate between greatness and uh, a bit of abject failure. Yeah, that's that's the big question. They've shown themselves to be a little bit meta-dependent in the past. And Bad Life coming in for a level one gank, actually. Here he comes. There's the ghost immediately popped. Are they going to get some more auto attacks down? No, just backing off Snowflower, reading the situation and coming in. Both supports on a little bit of a jungle mission right there to see if they can disrupt the opponent's jungling should it be taking place on the weak side, but Mad Life gets the first move, and those little, little maneuvers like that do make a big, big difference in Runeglaive Ezreal's ability to get rolling in the early game. If you don't have Ghost Tile, there's just one less summoner, one less variable that can get those early first bloods, and it feels like if Coco can keep up in CS, we already mentioned, surprisingly free to do damage in the late game compared to, say, Maokai lockdown comps or any Maokai lockdown comps that we often see comp together to shut down this Ezreal. And the fact that they had the flexibility, CJ enters to last pick Runeglaive Ezreal on perhaps the last patch where it's a relevant pick. We talked about how good a draft it is from CJ, and just the, you have to really raise questions on the same coins against Anarchy's draft. Yep. 
Apparently they feel very confident in doing this, but it does take a lot of coordination to shut down the Runeblade Ezreal with a victor. I think it's a great pick against Runeblade Ez, but it takes so much vision. Now, we do see some wards coming down already on the Anarchy side. You see that line across the river, and they're starting to be able to push up. So this is a good sign for Anarchy. Starting to chip that tower down. It's so important. Snowflower in the top side to make sure that Ixu can get some farm and hit his Trinity Force as soon as possible. So let's explain to the viewers, though, because if you think about it, Victor doesn't have immediate kill pressure on Ezreal. And of course, the first school of thought was we got to pick the Zed to try and kill him in lane. Why is Victor the champion? Or why do Victor comps actually have a hope at shutting down this Runeglaive Ezreal if there's not immediate lane kill pressure? Well, because you can clear the wave super easily, push it up to the tower, and then you can start attacking their junglers or getting free autos down onto the turret. And why is Shy here? There's a flash taunt. It is going to miss. A nice attempt there from Shy, and this is how you counteract it, is that when it comes to pressure, you have to be so careful. And Shy being very tricky coming out of the 1v1 in the bottom lane to attempt that gank. So now both summoners blown, and when you're victor, you start to get nervous now if you can't push up. So they're doing a good job of shutting this down. And if you actually look at the statistics between these two mid laners, both of them put out 32.6% of their team's overall damage. These are two, I guess, dam most damaging mid laners in the whole of champions. And it's no surprise with Mickey, but it's actually a surprise that the first team to rotate around their mid laner wasn't Anarchy for once. It's actually CJ Entis. Maybe it's because the matchup needs a little bit of help early, but Honestly, Mickey and Kogo, these are two names that are very likely to stack on MVP points if their teams are going to be able to pick up wins today. Yes, absolutely. Coco too, is just having a hell of a season. I mean, he's number one in kills in this league at 170, and he's number five in kill contribution at over 75%. So he's not only just finishing off a lot of these kills. He is such a huge part of the way his team plays League of Legends. If Coco has a bad game, then CJ has a hard time winning. Fortunately, uh, that, while we can say the same thing about Mickey, uh, Coco tends to have four good games and a better supporting staff surrounding him to ensure that he does. And look, Coco, I think, is definitely set up to succeed, whether you're just looking at the first five minutes of this game where two ganks have blown both in the defensive summoners of Mickey. Nice little hook coming through. But it's fourth first aid. There's a team, you know, one of the oldest organizations in competitive esports and specifically competitive League of Legends, and a very new team that's only recently picked up support staff. So otherwise, the statistics are very similar between Mickey and Coco. Yeah. Indeed. Well, Ambition here having a little bit of a tough time getting into the river right now between Ixu and Lyra. And those wards coming in nice and deep. And so Mickey still. Not going to be too worried right now about his prospects in this laning phase. Anarchy trying to keep up that vision control, but Coco actually ahead in CS right now already has the Rangers Trailblazer found a time to recall and buy that. So he's going to be very comfortable here. Given this CISO mid lane matchup, it really does feel like Lyra and Snowflower versus Ambition and Mad Life and being able to create pressure because. Those victor lanes, specifically the ones where we see Faker take down the enemy out of turret against a low wave clear champion, which of course you have to say is this Runeglaive Ezreal, especially early in the game without blue buff and some cooldown reduction for that ultimate. If that happens, then it's Mickey's able to instant clear with his first hex core upgrade and roam around. That's what Anarchy need to do to set up the win, and that's why it's so crucial that it's all been CJ pressure in the first seven minutes. Yeah, this is uh, definitely an interesting situation for Mickey. He doesn't even really have any tower damage, as we can see. So he's been able to put the poke onto Coco, but not actually translate it into anything else. Uh, most they've done, really, is just continue to get deep wards in, as there's no way that Coco can respond when the wave is pushed up to his turret like this. Very interesting to see when uh, space switches down back to the bottom lane. Actually has to use heal. We're seeing the game come with it. Forces out the ultimate. Ixil get away. He's low, has some sustain. Will that actually lead to the swap back as Madlife's low himself? Yeah, they have TP still, though. This could be dangerous. No Flower going to take a lot of damage from the turret. Is Shy going to come back down to the bottom side? Looks like the answer is no. They're just going to let Madlife not die until the flash comes through. Madlife, is he going to go down? Yes, he does eventually. Song Yoon pursuing that kill through the turret. And now they're going to TP into top to get a very large minion wave. So 
Interesting choice there from Shai. He was actually proxying the wave at the top side while that happened. Yeah. So let's try and work out what happened through all this. Because remember, Stan United was used right at the start of that fight. Shai has the teleport advantage. Ixu teleports back up to top. They pick up the first bud, but man, Madlife was almost slippery enough to live despite so much turret diving, so much turret damage. No answering kill, though, for CJ Enters. They did get... He did get three summoners out of them mm. for that dive, and there wasn't an objective taken, so not too bad, all things concerned for CJ. It is a bit of a surprise that we didn't have the teleport down there for Shy. Instead, he just backs off and TPs right back to his lane. There's the taunt coming in onto Ixu. Ixu have ultimate. He doesn't, and he just... Oh, there we go, knocking him around a little bit. Ambition doesn't have explosive casks, so he can't follow up does actually answer the pink ward instantly. So no value from that 100 gold purchase, no teleport left for Ixu, and only half health. Now he does have the flask, but that's certainly not gonna be the instantaneous regen he needs. But at least Anarchy's playing smart. If they can deny this blue buff, then the wave control will be palpable now that the hex drink, uh, sorry, the hex core upgrade has been picked up. And it looks like, yep, gonna be able to take it away, but probably didn't need to smite it there, Lyra. Yeah, maybe they were worried about True Shot Barrage picking it up, but it's like they'll have to go for another blue buff when it arrives after this red buff is taken right now by Lyra. So, uh oh, Ambition coming through. Ambition already stole their blue, actually, so here he comes. There's a flash body slam, and there's an explosive cast. Mickey gets the flash off, has to use both his summoners, and we'll now have to go back to base. So Ambition actually took enemy blue, so neither mid lane are going to get a blue buff right now. So I think it's a much bigger factor for the Ezreal than the Victor, who, you know, on the cooldown of about six, seven seconds, from level seven onwards, you get that hex core upgrade, you instantly clear the backline waves, you force Coco to farm under turret. Now, you don't have the turret down, so you can't then go for the leisurely walk into bottom or top, but still, you do have that instant wave there advantage compared to Ezreal. You certainly do. So, uh, taking a look at this now, we do have some wards being put down in the bottom river. Mickey did not actually recall after getting chunked. Had a couple of biscuits on him to heal himself up, but that's going to be a completed rune glaive now for Coco. And he's not going to lose much in the mid lane either. Mad Life clears out a pink ward in the bottom river. And now, the uh, well, looks like no one's going to Try and make a play for the dragon just yet, in spite of the fact that the mid and bot lane are not there for Anarchy. Surprising amount of sweeping uh, lenses being picked up so far by CJ Antis. They're not going to focus on the warding tomes that a team like Jinair would pick up. And what is, feels like at least, a, at least a quasi poke comp in the mid game. Now, of course, they always have the flexibility to change when they upgrade, but for now, just denying the vision is in the bot lane. Avarice Blade is what we feel like is the big thing that was able to pick up with the first Blood Gold earlier in the game. Yeah, that is a nice early buy to start snowballing some sort of gold advantage. Ixu uh, has full vision of the Gragas, and this is great play. Go for this proxy farm and get the turret damage down. Punish CJ's low early wave clear while you can. Uh, not going to be committing too hard for that. Ixu does have some issues dueling right now. I mean, he just has Merc Treads and a Home Garden champ. Picking for team fights and not for lane. Maybe that will be important when we're talking about the next dragon. It's about 10, 15 seconds till his teleport is up. We'll need to make a play to justify 1,500 gold for very low laning statistics. Not sticking around in Fountain either, so just zipping back up into top with those Home Guard boosts to try and pick up the farm. So no plan to be made right now. Now they lost most of their wards directly around that dragon. See if Snowflower can get back in there, find an angle, but CJ playing this bottom side of the map really hard right now. They're definitely powering up, they're looking for certain item timings, the Trinity Force for space, and then just a couple of AP items to complement the Rune Glaive for Coco. Doesn't take any poke. The, the big issue for CJ is that because they'll function effectively as a poke comp with the shy split push towards the mid game, you have to respect the fact that the turret damage is actually very high from Anarchy. So even though they'll reach a point where it feels like team fights will be in their purview, you get cute with the poke. 
Siva and Hecarim do excellent turret damage, and there is the potential still in the late game for Andy to get through. Again, accounting for Coco and Ezreal is a big thing to take into consideration, but if they can do it, and even once, they'll be able to take a lot of structures. Okay, it's a little tussle right here. Lyra actually getting hit early, has to flash out instead of using that tunnel. Now the damage really starting to pile on. Snowflower there uses the box. Ambition forward, forces the flash. And that is going to be a very one skirmish. Lyra getting close. Coco has no mana to really finish off this fight. Just going to use his smite right there on the scuttle crab. Crucially, Lyra doesn't have the void rush. So they go for Dragon's Ixu might be soloed by Shy in the top lane. The sword! After the ultimate takes it down, Shy with the least ninja like move available, chucking a sword. The world's longest range <laughs> Vorpal Blade, about a 700 range Vorpal Blade, casually picks up the kill. Wouldn't have overkilled by much, not high base damage, but CJ, <laughs> understand they could pick up the dragon because Void Rush is down and Lyra was chunked out, even getting the bonus up top and suddenly swinging towards the Bakers of the Street. Well, I mean, just the Shen against the Hecarim, because any matchup that Shen could early build the the uh, Sunfire Cape is just excellent for Shen. Uh-oh, Space uh, getting a little frisky in the bottom side. Now the TP going to come in, but Shai is already there with his ultimate. Ixu's there, but how much can they do? Space out of mana right now. Ixu get on the space. They are going to get that kill. Mad Life getting low, but Shai still there, ticking away. Ambition coming up, and will he get another sword kill? Ah, oh. That was almost great. Ambition is so low, what is he doing there? He was very low out of the jungle, and he could have flashed that hook, too. Mickey and Lyra both in vision. Coco's going to be very slippery. It's not going to be any answering kill. Can't even clear out the pink ward. Nice defense from Coco. Ambition had the ultimate. He had a lot of options and just died. Oh. oh. Ooh, Q misses. No true shot barrage. Got eight seconds. How fast can he get it? Three, two, one. one. Can he get the kill? Uh, Lyra's there, going to just heal up and swing and a miss. No Mickey in that brush. Not quite Ezreal, not quite fake as Ezreal when it comes to being on point with those skill shots, but now with Rune Glaive Ezreal, it's just even that much more opportunity. Just chuck him out, hope for the best. Especially with that blue buff, you get it, you get your ultimate up back so frequently. You just get cooldown reduction from the Rune Glaive and just itemize it a little bit more naturally. Saw Dare on the weekend go for the Athene's Unholy Grail Rune Glaive. So I don't know about that one. <laughs> but uh, we're going to watch this skirmish again. A lot of free damage taken from space, and even the Shen ultimate wasn't enough. Yeah, you see the True Shot Barrage too, going for that blue buff rather than actually contributing to this skirmish at the bottom side. And now, of course, Mad Light going to back off. The real question mark here is why is Ambition coming in when he is so low? As his ultimate at this point. No, he didn't actually have it. Came off good at the last second. That's why it looks so awkward and late. But nice hook from Snowfile. We had to mention Thresh is this guy's key pick. And look, that was actually, three out of three kill participation. If I was Ambition, I wouldn't have thought that that hook was going to hit me either. I would have thought it was going to hit Shy, but he caught the outside of the Gragas uh, hitbox right there. So I can understand why he didn't flash. Don't want to catch any of Gragas' celebratory uh, skill shots or threshes for that matter. The death sentence very aptly named as Mickey. Look, he's got the CS disadvantage in mid, which is a bit awkward given the matchup. You know, Mickey plays Victor, but Mickey is not really a Victor player. I mean, this guy is a, an assassin player in the wrong meta, really. And we can see that priority first picking the Victor, but you have to be able to deliver on that champion. And what this means is you have to get that tower early in the matchup like this one. And that takes the coordination of your entire team. And coordination has not been Anarchy's strong suit as a more rookie team. And I would almost say, you know, in that regard, it's not really his Victor play. It's Anarchy's play around the Victor pick just doesn't really suit themselves to, as you mentioned, the pressure game around mid. It's been handily won by the likes of Shy and Madlife when it comes to pressure on Mickey. And he's behind in CS, he's behind in even turret damage, which is super awkward, as you mentioned, given the fact that Runeglaive Ezreal is getting basically a free lane. Yeah, absolutely is, and you wouldn't expect, especially that gank from Shy in the in the lane swap was quite unusual and not something that many teams will do. Now, they don't know that there's an ambition here. They do see him right now, and there you go. There's the stun, and that's going to be the problem as Snowflower just gets yanked around and goes down instantly. And 
Grom and Kogma so good together. Lyra trying to get the knockout bad like will fall. So nice return gank right there. Shy has the stand United. He's not going to use it. Interestingly, he could have gotten interrupted there by a Hecarim ultimate. Wasn't really set up. Chaos Storm comes down. So poor trade for CJ in the end. Songyun eats a combo, but it's not enough. And Shy still opting not to come into the bottom lane. This hasn't been that uncommon a result though, Monte Cristo. Kill trades in the early game from the really smart skirmishing Anarchy lineup, but not turning it into any objectives. In fact, losing objectives. That's the awkward factor, as you mentioned, against a physical damage champion getting to itemize so naturally again into Sunfire. Getting a solo kill and solo taking down a turret bodes very poorly for the extended laning phase between the Hecarim and the Shikers. And Shikers, remember, if Shen ever hits that taunt, reduced physical damage comes through from the taunt. And then, of course, just the armor stacking means that if he's able to unseat Hecarim even towards the late game, big strategic problems for Anarchy. Absolutely. Uh, Shy deciding not to match the damage of Ixu, though, will be, looks like, going for uh, Randuin's Omen as his next item, one would assume. And he does have plenty of damage on his team, so I suppose that having a Trinity Force here and being a backline threat himself isn't so much of a priority. Honestly, not that bad for the Swift Push as well, because Trinity Force Brox would be ideal. But given the fact that uh, one of the target buffs was to have that passive up more often, it scales up maximum health, you have good turret damage. We're seeing the trading on to Lyra. Looks like it's gonna be fine. This is gonna be a big true shot barrage, but nice dodge. Uh, Ambition also decides not to use his explosive cast there. He knew Tunnel was down and that Flash was up. Probably could have gotten a Flash out of Lyra, but he will save it for a possible engagement here at the blue buff. Coco just gonna pop over the wall though with the Arcane Shift to dodge Snowflower's hook and secure the blue buff. Mad Life will just simply pull the minions out of the lane. Interesting to see that still the Luden's Echo is the next pickup. Doesn't proc on the Q anymore, so. It's gonna be big for the ultimate though, which will be chunking people out left, right, and center. Now W still has enough range that you can reliably proc the Luden, so definitely not the end of the world and an extremely necessary change because that was, I mean, Runeglaive Ezreal still broken, but that was even more broken. Dragon's live again. First one was taken Snowfire by CJ. goes for a walk. Okay, there we go. Shenold coming through. They want Snowflower. He drops the box, but Shy's already there. Goodbye, Snowflower. Eats an essence flux, and he will go down. And now, priority for this dragon easily going over to CJ Antis. They can't even really punish this by taking a top tower. Shy has the opportunity just to go ahead and TP back into top lane whenever he wants to. They don't even lose pressure in mid lane, Monte Cristo. Coco can just push up, still winning that push battle against Victor. Everything going the way of CJ and just barring those small skirmishes that Anarchy have just not translated into map advantages. Well, they were going to have that all in potential in the early game. You look at the Sivir and the Thresh against the Kogma, and as long as you can get on top of the Kog, he is going to be a little bit weak. So Anarchy has executed that well, but they simply do not have enough right now. They don't have enough of a lead. It has actually dwindled about 2,000, 1,000, 2,000 gold now down to absolutely nothing. And this game was decided, it's going to be decided in the solo lanes, it feels like. Just, you look down at Sung in 3 0 2, he's doing very well. He even has the investment banker Avarice Blade. So his gold lead over space is going to be very strong. We just talked about the fact that Anarchy needed to control Coco. Nope, hasn't happened. 31 CS advantage and the equal amount of kills. And in the top lane, the advantage also gone to Shy. The split pushing and the strength of these solo laners, I think, will just count so much more than a Kog'Maw in the late game. Look, he'll get those items eventually. Yeah, he will. And in terms of items that Shen is going to have, because he's in a lane versus the Hecarim, he can build efficiently also against a Sivir that's ahead. Mm. More armor, that's all he's got to do. Armor and HP doesn't really have to worry quite so much about Vicky yet. That can take a bit of a backseat particularly since Ambition already has the Aegis. And Shen got those buffs. He now has Magic Resist per level, so he's doing better on that front, too. Just be cute here, Shy, of course. Very maneuverable is the ninja, drawing up some AP damage, but I mean, Mickey can't do that. He doesn't have anywhere near the same global presence. Two globals, just an embarrassment for Shy as his ultimate's now available again. Space is going to push down bottom. I just don't know what Anarchy can do. They need a big play with the Sivir. They need to force something, because they've been forcing kills, but nothing more. Nope. 
And they haven't gotten any dragons to show for it either. Some misplays on the map meant that they couldn't even contest. Snowflower going in alone in a dangerous situation and being easily caught out by CJ. They're pushing. Maybe they'll finally take out this turret down. Turret, it's going to be a turret trade at best with three members, and CJ's not stopping pushing. But yeah, they are not. They keep on rolling forward. Coco just wants to farm up the jungle while he can. Shy just ready and waiting for the next minion wave. And yep, this could be two turrets for one here. It's going to be one and a half as Kog'Ma just backs off. They don't have enough wards in the mid side to really justify continuing pushing. Although the item timings are good from Haneke, just waiting for it to actually pay off into something. Siv is very strong, but they haven't been able to opt into any dragon fights, which is where Siv's strength would have been amplified and shy. It almost feels like Hecarim has to leave this lane because Trinity Force Merc Treads isn't going to help you against just the consistent uh, sustained damage from Shy. It's going to be going to be a bit tough, I got to say. Well, at least the Trinity Force is there. I suppose that's what, that's the only thing you can do. But like you said, the damage from Shy still going to be very competitive in that regard. I mean, Trinity Force does damage in team fights they're not getting, and it's great for split pushing, but he's, he gets, can't split push against Shy, so it's it's nice, but again, we're talking about another at least completed health and defensive item like a Randuin's before. He's even going to be able to tussle up with a Shen, which this lane matchup should be pretty good for Hecarim early, and it wasn't, of course. It went very poorly, got solo killed. Doesn't get any better when you have to itemize purely for burst damage. And honestly, he's itemized for basically everything except laning stats against the Hecarim, against the Shen. Yeah, rough time, but we talked about that, Hecarim. This is the reason why we are not too enthusiastic about this champion. In the current meta, it just is too dependent on outside factors in the game. And hello, 50% of your HP and your entire minion wave. It wasn't even a Luden's prop for the minion wave, just died instantly to the lower damage. Of course, it takes, I believe, 15% less damage for everything it collides with. Not a big factor when it does just so much damn damage. Look at Coco's farm. He's at 300 at 25 minutes into this game. I mean, we don't usually see his stat lines like that, but he's been taking so much out of the jungle and has barely oh missed any CS. Ixu in a big... World of Hurt, but he is going to get out Snowflower there with the Lantern just in case. But that is an extraordinary amount of farm for this point in the game. Lane pressure is what Anarchy picked for. Actually, Teleport's coming through with the Home Guards. Forces a Flash, but will that be enough? Looks like Space has some friendly people to walk to, and it'll be fine. But they picked for Lane pressure, Monte Cristo. Victor can wave clear for days through uh, Coco's Ezreal. Ekram should be able to uh, dirty farm like we saw and just really pressure the single target Shen. Neither of those things happened, and awkwardly, it was only Siva that got any sort of advantage in the early game. And it's given Coco and Runeglaive Ezreal, and probably CJN just a free win. Yeah, and that lack of pressure, when we talk about it, it wasn't for a lack of warding. Anarchy actually did do a good job of warding up the enemy jungle early, but they were afraid to push as hard as they needed to. They knew Gragas was in bottom, yet we still saw Ixu a little bit gun-shy about farming behind the enemy turret or pushing on increased amounts of pressure. And that has sort of been the story, is that they haven't been able to take that information and turn it into a more valuable advantage. So a lot of those wards for not really. And you feel like the jungle bans certainly did, the mid lane bans, sorry, by CJ and just really have done a trip because you think back to the start of the season, of course, first match of the season, Naj and Anarchy. Anarchy bursts onto the scene, this Mickey, this upstart player, excellent, the assassins beating the Naj and EM fire team, which once again we had a lot of hopes for at the start of the season. You might have thought, okay, the one thing you can say for Anarchy is they try and make things happen. They're good with the turret dives, they don't try and play the long game, they'll try and make things happen. They picked a comp that needed to make things happen, but now right towards the end of the season, they've been a bit gun shy, and CJ enters just happily farming, knowing that just like against SKT in game three, they've got this in the late game. Yeah, they have it, and they have the Dragon Stacks, which is a difference between that SKT game. Flash forward, there's the hook. Mickey's going to drop the Chaos Storm. Mad Life very low, but he's not doing enough damage, really. Disengage with that explosive cast. They fall back to their blue buff. Still want to contest this. They don't have a couple of ults right now. Lyra will get jumped on. There is no backup for Lyra. There's a tunnel and a lantern to exit the scene. All the results, everyone backs where they get the mid lane turret, but Mickey's nowhere to be found. He's just pushing bottom lane. 
What are they farming up for? I can't name one single item pickup for Anarchy that will really change this game because it's things like this Shen getting free split push time that items don't give you answers for. No, no, they do not. See, Ixu is slowly doing damage to the Shen, but not enough and not fast enough, that is for sure. So CJ now advancing into the mid lane. They're trying to get this turret for a turret, and they will answer. Tier 1 for Tier 1 in the mid lane, but they get that Dragon too, and they draw out some very valuable summoners. Let's talk about a different game with the same comps, Monchiko. So let's talk about a game where Anarchy were able to pull off that lane pressure. My goodness, already the True Shot Bride is doing so much damage. But in a different game, you get the pressure on Kobe, you take his turret early, you deny him blue buff, it's a totally different ball game. That's what Anarchy picked to do. That's what we hope to see. It's what they've shown they can do. Lyra and Mickey have some excellent jungle mid lane synergy, but that just sounds like a fairy tale, unfortunately, 30 minutes into this game. Yeah, absolutely. And to be fair to Anarchy, they did deny the blue buff, but you also have to get the blue buff ah, onto yes. the victor. So ah. they had half of that plan executed, but not the entire thing. And right? awkwardly, they denied that first blue buff and then actually had their second, the next one stolen away from the jungle pressure of Ambition and Coco. So never created the lopsided environment they needed, barring the bot lane that we talked about a couple of times. This point doesn't really matter. Cogmore's just gonna do that late game damage. It's one of the reasons he's such a popular pick is that he waddles around the back line. No one's really running the Hecarim. So, okay, they've got the Hecarim, but I remain to be convinced that a no armor Hecarim can really harangue or harass space in a team fight at all. Well, uh, especially when he has a Shen ult on him. Yep. Because Shen is not going to be used for engages here. Level 16, plus 850 health, and Ixu found a lot of people. He's dead. Found a Bio Arcane Barrage for the last shot. Ambition making the gank work in the top lane. Now, can they go for a Baron right now? Long death timer onto Ixu. They've got 40 seconds to work with, but they don't have the vision. It's even worse than that for Anarchy. He doesn't even have teleport to match the Shen split push, so it feels like CJ will stack advantages and look for a mistake from Anarchy. Here we go. Already on the tier two in the bottom side. CJ going to get that one quite easily, and a large minion wave for Shen in bottom to work with. Coco reverses that mid wave right past Anarchy's river, and here we go. Vicky gonna start popping out of Coco. There's a good night gravity field to get some damage down, but it's just not enough. Space walking forward, forcing the flash out of Mickey with the threat of more and more damage. Yeah, she had three concussive blows stacks on him as well, so I mean the stun would have definitely registered there. Braum is so strong in this current meta, and CJ, you wouldn't know it from the kill score, you wouldn't even know it from the gold, but it's one of those games where you feel like they're 10,000 gold ahead, even if only the dragon stacks really show how far ahead they are. Passing it over. True Shot Barrage will grab the enemy blue buff. That's yet another blue from Coco. He has had so many this game. And this is the AP Ezreal that you picked for. This is the Runeglaive Ezreal that really is the terror in everyone's dreams. 380 CS in 30 minutes. It should never happen. You should not be pushing CS record numbers on a champion like Runeglaive Ezreal. This is insane. I mean, he keeps on just jumping further and further ahead when it comes to these CS. Uh, he was up by 50 uh, when we normally consider it, of course, at about 25 minutes. Should have only had about 250 then. Now he's up by 70, nearly 80 at 31 minutes. And that standard that we use, 10 CS per minute on average. Uh, this is a very impressive performance. And you know what the kind of the most interesting thing about that number is? You know there's some jungle camps there, of course. He's got the... Uh He's got the pink, the purple smite, so he can take down the raptors very fast. Look at the difference between the jungles. There's actually only 7 CS a disadvantage for Ambition over Lyra, despite the fact that Coco has been free to take every camp he can get his arms on. It's not been too terribly hard for him. Still, only a 2,000 gold difference for CJ Entis, in spite of all of that. Anarchy has done what they can to keep it even, but the truth is in those dragon numbers. The truth is in the scaling of CJ Entis' composition, which will vastly outstrip their opponents unless they can somehow and magically get that victor on top of Coco. And here comes the Baron. The Baron started Shen, not even showing in lane, ready to ult at any possible moment. Ekram's okay in the spot. He's in the base. He's looking for an option, but keep recalling, no armor whatsoever on this Hecarim. He will explode unless they get the mother of all wombo combos on basically both Ezreal and Kog'Maw. Yeah, that is... Oh! 
Wow, a lot of damage onto Mickey. Mickey doesn't look like he has any pots to even deal with this, so another Baron attempt should be incoming from CJ. They have great pink boards right in front of the bin. More poke damage, and there you go. Are they gonna get this? Gravity field goes down. Ambition gets stunned, but there's so much backup to proc the concussive blows. And this is really the uh, the genius that CJ Angus has been playing with recently is that they play so well around this prom. Here comes the ultimate onto Ambition. Shy gets himself right into the back of the pit, and now they're forcing Anarchy to fight at almost no HP. Uh, will they be able to do much of anything at all? And here comes Ixu. Ixu already low, going to miss his Onslaught of Shadows. Ambition on the side right now, and there we go. Space already low for the back of the pit, but can they actually finish this off or not? Coco did take a lot of damage, and look at this. Anarchy may be coming back, but there's a kill, and here comes the cleanup. Anarchy in a lot of trouble, slow from Winter's Bite, and we have the Living Artillery keeping on going. Bad Life still at full HP. He's going to get it, and pops the Concussive Blows himself. While Shy just TPs back in. He wants Mickey, and there's the taunt. No other follow up damage, though, so it won't pick up anything for the summoner. Ambition, in particular, was guilty of tanking that Baron far damn too long, just died when he finally peeled away from it. Looks like CJ gonna try the Baron again. Remember, they do have another smite, but crucially, Coco doesn't have a charge right now. Yeah, that was a bit of a split call, especially since Anarchy was already so low on several of their members. Kind of a mistake but CJ gets away with it just due to how powerful they are at the current time. And now they get the Baron, that gold gap starts to grow ever larger in this game, and lucky for them, they can transition right to a Dragon now that ambition is up. Just the lack of pressure that Anarchy put on for the first 35 minutes allows CJ to get away with what was a sloppy play. In another game, if you're 5K gold behind, try that as well. One less Giant Spell on your tank, one less item on everyone, you can't get away with being so sloppy as... Man, those true shot barrages do so much damage. The fourth dragon as well. Lyra gets out, but you don't really have much ways to force outside the Hecarim, and you need to start forcing very soon. As we look at a replay of an attempted force where Ambition got caught out. Wow, uh, Space really had a flash out of the back of the pit right there just because he was getting so low from the Baron damage. We watch the consistent damage coming through. The important thing is Coco and Space are strong enough to scrap. They're still putting out damage from such long range. And Mad Life got in and scrapped himself. That's right. Flashes forward. Just got to box on you to death. Punched him to death. Punched like him it. right in the back of the head. I still worry about the legality of chair shots in the league. <laughs> Do you? How about the sucker punch right there? The sucker punch, the chair. Where's the ref? <laughs> They're at the booths, Papa Smithy. They obviously don't care. I wonder about the integrity of OGN <laughs> champions sometime, Monte Cristo. <laughs> Anarchy, they've just never been able to force anything, and now they just can't. There's no way to do it. They don't have the items on their only true initiator in Ixu. Snowfire is on the threat. She was more about helping Mickey in the laning phase than, say, an Annie that would have been more backline threat. And these two shot barrages, oh, so low, but doesn't die. No, doesn't die. Ixu in the front line, but Space has a huge shed shield on him right now. There's the peel. Chaos Storm really not going to do anything. Shy now just running interference in the front line. Four dragons now for CJ Entis. And Lyra, so lucky to make it out there with his life. Had a Thresh shield to get him out with some degree of safety, but that's not going to stop CJ Entis from just moving on through this mid lane turret with those barrened up minions. Barrened up minions, poke excellent turret damage with the truth with the Triforce and of course the Rune Glaive that builds out the Sheen doing great turret damage itself. There's nothing you can do, and honestly, Anarchy, if they don't get the Hector and Flank, Ambition will be caught again though. Ambition not having a great game for being caught outright here, but he is far enough ahead that it's not going to matter. Song Yoon just eliminated from that fight instantly. They're hunting him down. Not another living artillery is going to hit, though, and Anarchy will be chased off. Eventually, Coco getting very dangerously close to another Q. Ixu going to have to body block that, but the W will do the work. And Coco with a double. There's always another Q, Monte Cristo, when we're talking about Runeglaive Ezreal especially, and Coco, the Korean sniper, as he's well known as in this part. It's not the Jace that we really maybe first associate that name with, but there's more poke on the Ezreal. Yeah, just very accurate skill shots too, to clean up that fight, and now Shy doesn't take damage. Does not take damage from this turret. He's got so much HP, and that 
far as it's going to be. Sangi spell shields the tree shot barrage, and Coco gets low. Uh, is this going to stop the inhibitor from going down? Two members of Anarchy still with gray screens, and that's not going to help out. Here we go. Stoneflower is going to be the first to fall. Another kill for Coco, who is really starting to stack it up. Even though he has a Cogmore on his side, the damage dealt to Champions Chart is going to be so far lopsided in the advantage of Coco. Speaking of lopsided, 4,000 4, gold ahead in the mid lane. Casually has four items. Going to build a Banshee Veil. Doesn't feel like he needs any more damage. That's sad. The one-shot potential onto the support might have eluded yeah. us a little bit. But Coco, uh, come on. Zonia's is a, is a defensive item. He's playing Ezreal of all champions. If you can't trust your Ezreal mechanics, your safety in the back line, <laughs> On Ezreal, yeah. Coco, mana. Come on, you have your flash up, you have your arcane ship. There's even a Mikhail. Zonia's is there for you. Zonia's is there for you. Yeah, exactly. There's a Braum with a Mikhail. No, don't build the Banshee's Veil. I, I didn't think we could levy this at Coco. <laughs> the highest kill, uh, highest kills in the league, but uh, just really putting a dampener on what has been a CJ celebration almost. You know, they had that big win in their last series. Anarchy have basically given them a free game to show their ways, show their team fighting and their strength with these high damage comps in the late game, completely unimpeded. And CJ has said, thank you very much. And now, they haven't finished the game, but is it going to be the fifth dragon? Is it going to be the next Baron? Is it just going to be steamrolling over the team and winning the game without either of those? CJ, every win condition is in their column. And Anarchy, it's time to start thinking about game two. Yeah, definitely is. One thing that CJ has struggled with this game is just Ambition's play. I mean, we look at the rest of his team, Hardly any deaths, a high percentage of kill contribution, but as a jungler sitting at just 50% right now, and by, you know, the most deaths on this team, half of the kills. And he's been out of position, he's been caught out, he's been ganking questionably well. Now we saw Trick look, given the small sample size, he's only played five games, more stable. And Trick was the jungler that they trusted to carry them to that win versus SKT. Is this the end, really, of Ambition's time in the jungle, at least for a little while because he can't keep having games like this against top teams. That's he's he will be punished a lot harder. Push up Raj goes wide this time. It's still gonna get the turret if they want to force it, but no, they're backed away. Okay, they're letting Shen's put push in the top lane. Definitely feels like a sense of inevitability for this base being broken. But I agree with you. You have to wonder how Ambition will come back from once again. You know, this happened multiple times in his career. His position being threatened. It happened when he was in the mid lane. Now it's happening in the jungle. Okay. I'm not sure what Sanyin was doing there, but he is actually going to live. There comes the Glacial Fisher. Vicky now in the front line. Had to save his ally. And Mickey will pay for Sanyin's uh, positioning there with his own life. Now everybody on the run. Coco with the kill on the thresh. Coco keeps on moving through. Double kill for him. And that will be the triple for the Runeglaive Ezreal. He'll end the game 7-0 and 4. As Song Yun back in the base. And that is going to be the end. CJ picks up the first game in this best of three. A very clean win from CJ. Maybe some of Ambition's poor positioning excluded. Specifically, the solo lanes went really well for CJ Entis. Will we see Trick in game two? That's maybe the question that we have to wonder about. Well, and if we talk about how CJ got ahead here, it was really the pressure from Madlife and Shy. I mean, they were almost doing Ambition's job for him at times. And certainly it's more surprising when that Braum comes into your lane at level one, and we have Shy come in at level three on Shen in a, in a lane swap situation. But Ambition really didn't into this Paul any matchups, and in spite of everything, it was more on Anarchy not getting any pressure down onto Coco than Ambition creating the pressure. As you mentioned, Ambition awkwardly a little bit more of a hindrance than really a helper towards Coco getting to get, getting it together. So he gets another shot. Will he be able to cement a position in this team, or will we just see the uh, Ambition trick revolving door until the gauntlet starts? Big questions coming up, and. CJ obviously using Ambition here, perhaps because it is a weaker Anarchy lineup while they try and groom Trick, but have to like Trick when he can get a win over SKT, gotta say. So Zed going to be the first ban, was banned on the red side by CJ in the last game, is almost always banned against Mickey. Games like the last game really make me sad about the shift in meta, Monte Cristo, you know. I definitely like an Anarchy on other days to really a turn from another game, you know, the get in there, everyone get in here kind of team. They're very good at playing around Mickey. They're really good at committing. You know, they're getting, 
They are the grim patrons of uh, of League of Legends right there. Just everybody piling into the mid lane. Yep, and that deck's pretty strong in Hearthstone. <laughs> and at the start of the season against teams like uh, Najin, they were able to blow away opposition. But is the meta in a place like that when you have Mickey playing a champion like Victor, who that's just, that's just not what he does? Well, he does play the TF, though, and that is going to be banned this time on the blue side by what, CJ. What else does he play, Monte Cristo? They got one more ban left. I got the Ari. Just take out the Ari. Just get out of there. Everyone get out of there when it comes to Mickey's picks. Yeah, CJ. Well, they could ban the Ezreal, too, but frankly, uh, Mickey's Runeglaive Ezreal. Yeah, so. Okay, so they want to pick Runeglaive Ez again, is what this says to me. Because we know that Anarchy, when they see an early Ezreal, when they played SK Telecom, they responded with a Yasuo. Mickey very confident in his abilities, has a million games played on Yasuo in solo queue. So this says to me, hey, we want that Ezreal one more time. Speaking of one more time, finally Madlife gets the respect ban on Brahm. Awkwardly, as you mentioned, it leaves Ezreal open. The question is, do CJ feel pressured to first pick it? Because Mickey, he played the AP Ezreal, he's a skilled player. You could see that being a pick for him, but it's, again, not one of the champions that gets in there. It's not the it's not a champion that Anarchy can really play against or necessarily show any aptitude in playing with. That's true. And I think the Kog'Maw is better because guess what's open this game? Azir. And Mickey, not an Azir player, so you'd have to think that maybe they're just going to give the Runeglaive Ez to Anarchy and play better around it. We know that Coco and Azir can really do a lot in the mid lane against that low wave clear and poke him out early. So Cog seems to make more sense. They're going to get one or the other. It does feel like CJ have taken on, you know, an, an image much like SKT in the past where they have a soul carry in the mid lane that really draws a lot of pressure. He's the person you need to shut down and that usually opens up space, awkwardly space for space to carry or space to do damage or to pick up a high damage champion like Cogmore and skip past the relative lack of backline threat in the current meta. So happy to just go with the Kog'Maw. I believe they're 100% win rate or near that with the Kog'Maw. It's just been a power pick across the meta. And when you're drawing bands to other roles like support, it opens it up as a first pick. Yeah, and when the Kalista and the Rise are still necessary bands here on the red side, according to most Korean teams, Echo, the early pick for Lyra, been yeah. interesting. Uh, we've seen Lyra do some more damage-oriented builds, like Runeglaive Echo into full tank for some earlier pressure in the mid game. Does suggest the likes of a Maokai in top lane. Of course, if you have any semblance of targeted CC, suddenly the parallel convergence just becomes one of the strongest ganking tools in the game. So. Smart to pick up the Shen in this situation. They could have gone for the Maokai to deny any backline threat onto the Kog'Maw, but of course the, the Shen shield will do similar work in countering that in team fights. And you don't feel like there's a lot of kill pressure onto a Shen with the magic resist per level, just with how Shy has been playing. Even though you have excellent gang pressure, taking down a Shen, never a guarantee. No, it is not. And well, it'll actually be a rumble. That would be a bit of a surprise. That would cut down a lot of possible gank pressure here. Okay, Jinx, Jinx is locked in. So rumble and Jinx going for a lot of AOE to set up the Jinx so far. I wonder how they are going to round this out. Victor would obviously be very good here. Have a lot of zone control with parallel convergence of the gravity field. CJ have been kiting back so expertly that that Anarchy have at least for once put out the goal and said, "All right, now we're going to have a really high damage backline that that you need to respect." How will CJ deal with that? We're seeing the mousing over of very similar portraits actually between the Bard and the Blitzcrank. Circle eyes, flowing circle eyes. Do you just battle in terms of backline hyper carry threats, or do you go for some engage with Alistair up? And this is Mad Life we're talking about. That could loom as the pick for support. Yeah, I think Alistair definitely the best here. Has more flexibility in terms of both engage and disengage, with which they might need if they go for an Ezreal and a Kog'Maw together in the backside. In addition to that, Shen Shield. So that would be a very powerful engage. Alistair combo straight into a Shen Taunt, and that's what it's going to be. So Runeglaive Ezreal once again for CJ Entes. Now, is Victor going to be the answer? I don't think Victor is the answer, but they're going to mouse over and they consider their options. I don't think Victor is the answer for Anarchy. Do they go for the Ari here, try and land the charm, and that's what they're going to do. Ari is not banned. Ari is locked in for Anarchy. So returning to a comfort pick when the match is on the line. Suddenly a lot of magic damage on the side, but the only physical damage dealer puts out a lot of damn damage, and that's Jinx. So this is actually a pretty decent comp coming through now. 
My only worry, not a lot of options when it comes to ganks for this Jungle Echo, and Jungle Echoes have really struggled to get going in Champions. Uh, and even if Lyra builds damage, it's just the lockdown may not be there unless that charm lands. That's about, or a hook, that's about what he's got going for them. But those are not so reliable for actually landing a parallel convergence because your target is moving in both of those abilities. So not a lockdown to really easily get that. CJ has some just comfort picks across the board. You have the Rek'Sai, Coco did very well in the Runeglaive Ezreal, held his own in the mid lane. and. Space on Kog'Maw, Mad Life on Alistair, Shy on Shen. About as standard as it could be right now for CJ. Sad we didn't get to see the Azir today, honestly. Would have liked to have seen. I always like to see Coco play that Azir. You worry that if the hyper carries get going again, Monte Cristo, especially if Lyra builds some damage, no tankiness to speak of at all on this Rebels Anarchy lineup. And the deletion from that True Shot Barrage was close. There was 70, 80% junking. Maybe it's 100% junking this time. All right, well, we'll see if Coco can reprise his role in game one and carry CJ to a win right now. Falalas from Kogma. Where's the Sona to really deck the holes completely out? <laughs> Christmas in July. You know? hey, I'm feeling seasonal, and honestly, there's a lot to celebrate for CJ recently, so don't mind a bit of singing. Consistent trend for them has not to pick up clean wins. They always drop it down. In fact, we saw some sloppy team fighting from them in the previous game. They only managed to pick up a 2-1 win over Spanner. Okay with the asterisk of some subs. It would mean a lot for them and their momentum as they push towards the finals. If they could pick up a clean 2-0 win, given that they've effectively dropped a game by showing up late to the studio today. Yeah, that penalty point is just so huge. And it's going to be really sad if one of these teams actually has a difference in the standings. For those of you who don't know, the playoffs here are not bracketed, which means that SK Telecom is already seated as the regular season winner, as number one into the grand final. And for every position you drop down in the top five teams, you have to play one more best of five to try and make it to the final. So it really does get a lot harder. And by the way, guys, those lead up best of fives, all three of them, take place in a single week. So you have to win. If you're fourth or fifth, three best of fives to make it to the final in a week. That is so hard to do. That's effectively four best of fives against teams that have been trading wins all season. These teams are all clumped up because some of them beat each other, but there's no consistent second place team, especially with Ku really flattering to deceive and slightly falling away in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. If you had to kind of point to one, it'd probably be CJ or KT actually in the second round Robin here. They both have had a bit more success. Now Shy is going to get slapped around. He's and a blue buff, interesting. Yeah, it gave him the blue. I mean, both of them are manalist champions. It allows more Vorpal Blades in the early game. It's theoretically more sustain and harass. So I was doing a great harassment job himself, but can't get too much done. I am surprised about that blue buff. One wonders if that was possibly accidental, but perhaps Shy will be able to use that cooldown reduction for some nice effect in terms of his sustain and his ability to farm underneath the turret. We'll just recall right now and TP into the top side. All right, so Anarchy. They're against the same rune glaive as well. They're against a lot of similar factors in terms of the jungle pressure. Okay, it's not the same champion, but Rek'Sai right up there with Gragas in similarity. Can they make the Ari? Uh, duo work with Lyra in the jungle on this Echo. That's what they have to do. They have to pressure Coco because, I mean, we, we just blurted out all sorts of statistics about how much damage Coco was able to pull out free farm. This is an assassin. This is a high damage jungler as well. Something needs to change. Something needs to give if Anarchy are going to be able to push this CJ Enters lineup in game two. The problem with this matchup, though, Papa Smithy, is that there isn't honestly much kill pressure pre six because. Ari just can't compete with the dash of the Arcane Shift before that ability, before she gets the Spirit Rush, really. And that does make it difficult. Maybe, maybe you could surprise Coco with some sort of Flash Charm, but that would basically rely on Coco misplaying and failing to answer that ability with one of his own. And 
Frankly, that just that just seems unlikely. And then you're in the unenviable position of perhaps being down a flash for just an arcane shift. So tricky, very tricky. You know, people have been kind of reticent to call Arya true assassin after she had her damage numbers changed. They was going to be walking in the top line, but spotted. But one of the reasons why still a true assassin this matchup is, of course, hilariously low base stats on Ezreal, given that he's usually an AD carry, and in general, he has such safety in his abilities. One thing to consider, though, Monte Cristo, doesn't have the flexibility of taking cleanse, so the kill pressure is still there if that first charm lands. All right there in the top side, we did see that they're trying to bait him out a little bit. They do have that ward, so Shy was basically just attempting to delay Lyra right there, making himself an attractive flay slash hook target. Lyra actually awkwardly stepped out, even if he didn't have the knowledge that he was in vision the whole time, so just has to walk away with his tail between his legs. Yeah, so nice mind game there by Shy, feeling very confident in his ability to taunt out of that, but wanting to make sure Lyra could stay in vision for as long as possible. He's still going to be in vision, actually. Nice pink ward from CJ. As Coco falls back underneath his turret, still farming up right now, staying even in that CS. He'll actually be ahead once this wave is finished. So again, Coco really doing a lot. Well, he's not playing a lot of the CS well, does eat a charm, but there's no follow-up just yet. A lot of harassment onto the turret from Mickey. Remember, it was the support crew of Shy and Madlife in particular that shut down the summoner spells. It was Ghost Flash on Victor last game. This time around, it's the Ignite from Mickey. He's close to level six. We mentioned you don't have the flexibility of cleanse when you have to take the summoner spell smite in order to just really pick up the rune glaive and match the wave clear. So there is that kill potential, even if it's only the one second charm coming through from Aaron. Yeah, and as for that kill potential, when we reach the late game, we talk about how important it is for Mickey to play one of these backline threats, one of these backline carries, and that is true, but CJ just responds with this Shen. That shuts out so much of Ari's kill potential in the late game, and I like that they picked it early, and a lot of teams, including SKT, have tried to ban the Shen to shut them down, but unfortunately, when CJ is on blue side, it's you can't really ban all of the major threats that they have there. They chose to ban the Braum, and here we go. Song Yun getting low. So he does have a bit of trouble. Madline, nice hook there from Snowflyer, but there's not going to be a whole lot of follow up. Song Yun too low to be trading. Speaking of trading, we're seeing a lot on the bottom. Space is super low. Will he die? Doesn't quite die to the overheat. And he will live, but. Man, these AD carries living on the edge. They really are, and Space had to flash and use his heal. Space has been caught out a lot in lane in these couple of games. His positioning in the team fights was good in the last one for the most part, despite that split call at Baron, but now uh, getting dangerously close to dying in lane two games in a row. Mm. Not sure what to make of these AD carries, really pushing it to the edge. I mean, Lyra. If he got hit by a Pracy guy, I think he would have died. He was on maybe just over 100 health. So Shy's going for that walk. He did that last game, but Mad Life and Shy, the ganking duo from CJ Enters. Yeah, Space here trying to turn this around. Nice damage down onto Ixu. He does have TP up. Isn't this amusing? Oh, 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 oh. I was endlessly amused by Ambition harassing in lane like a support while the jungle support <laughs> duo of uh, effectively Shy and Mad Life are the ones doing the roaming gang pressure. It's exactly what you talked about, but it's a misallocation of resources. That realistically should be jungle pressure that Ambition hasn't been able to put out, at least in a couple of the recent series we've seen. Well, and part of that is Space's fault too, right? Because Space is the guy who is getting all in here mm. nearly successfully in two games consecutively, so perhaps not playing with as much caution on the Kog'Ma as would be prudent, or not having the wards at the very least to play cautiously. So that has created some problems in and of itself. So CJ here, you know, they, they still have these troubles in the early game, and is, is a possible substitution the answer to that? I don't really know, but things right now their early game shakiness when we talk about playing against some teams like KT that are so powerful early. They're able to opt into these late game scaling comps and not be punished by Anarchy. It's all a moot point. They still will win yep. games against teams like Anarchy and that's kind of the, I mean, it's not really an issue, but it's, it's a query that we have about CJ is can they consistently beat the top teams if they're willing to opt into power troughs and play ambition, just not have the support jungle synergy you expect from a top team. 
So we were talking last game about the Victor pressure on the mid lane turret. Well, now that Mickey is six, he feels really comfortable and just very aggressively pushing. We see that mid lane turret is about 50% HP. This is a much better situation for Anarchy playing around the Ezreal in this game. Coco hasn't even had time to go back yet here at nine minutes because Mickey has really turned on the heat and he's gonna get that tower really, really soon. It's on Anarchy to make a lot happen in the mid game. They've got the equalizer, always been central to dragon control in most comps, has been picking up the rumble. Remember, the big strategic issue, who's stopping the split push in the late game? Because certainly not rumble, doesn't have an interrupt in the stand United. If Mickey gets going, if he picks up a couple of kills, maybe he can be the split pushing threat. But even that presents its own kind of uh, bag of worms when it comes to really counterplay for, C for CJ to be able to put out. So Anarchy need to get it going, and they need to get it going soon. Yeah, well, at least they are getting the turret damage this game, and they're getting it pre-10 minutes. This is the factor that really uh, wasn't there. Now, can they open it up? Can Mickey start to make plays on the side lanes with this Ari, start to dive some towers if he can open up the mid? We're going to be looking at that in the next few minutes. Finally, though, Coco gets a chance to go back, and that is huge because he gets the Rune Glaive and the Trailblazer, which vastly increases his wave clear. But both he and Mickey had very late recalls, but Mickey has been keeping him there. He's been pinning him there. And that is actually very well played by Mickey, understanding that the longer they were both without items, it was much more in his favor. He was smart using his mana, so just never was forced to go back and was able to chip down the tower to, what, 30% health really at good. maximum? Suddenly, though, it becomes very difficult to finish it off. So what I want to see from Lyra, rotate around mid lane, just put in the inherent pressure of two or three members from Anarchy being in mid, and take that turret just to ensure there's no flashbacks needed to just the free farm Coco of last game. So now are we going to see the dragon going through? Nice little scan there. We'll find two of CJ's wards. Ambition, Raptor buff popped, but not going to be able to take anything out really with that. Lots of nice wards inside and around the red buff from Anarchy on CJ. So now they're starting to roam as a unit. They really want this mid tower down. Coco has to fall back, just goes for the wolves right there, uses his smite to get it. But the little adjustments from the pick and ban phase will pay in the late game. For example, the Hecarim versus Shen at least had the interrupt. Rumble doesn't have it, but of course you don't have the luxury of picking up the Barmy Cinder. You have to go for the magic resist. So a lot's working for Anarchy that right now at 11 minutes, they have a huge power advantage. They have to turn it into something, something tangible, whether it's a turret going down, whether it's a dragon lead, they cannot leave it where it is because it's still the same inevitability about team fights at 35 minutes. Yeah, and as you're saying about that uh, cowl on the Shen, look at the damage onto the top lane turret. This is, uh-oh, here comes the die. Parallel Conjurgent versus Sports of the Flash. There's a double taunt coming in from Shy. Shy not on top of the Equalizer right now. He's dodged a lot of this damage. Overheat from Rumble. Now they can't get any more. Ixu is low. Ixu is not going to take another turret hit, but Shy expertly dodging those abilities. Dive has been failed. Ambition with a really long tunnel. Okay. And here we go. Ambition comes on with the Stand United. Nice turnaround kill from CJ. Yeah, the communication from CJ is so much more on point. By really Anakin. good. The question mark for Anarchy, why are they doing this? We see the battle in bot lane. Space is falling low, so sung, and they've got the consistent damage is in the circle falling. Same just Snowfire flashes and gets the kill. Sung he needs to floor, yeah. but stays alive. Does stay alive. No TP from Shy down into the bottom lane. Didn't have the HP after that gang to really reliably pull it off. Sung Yun had the Luxury of staying in minigun form. You can't trade with that damage when you're the more bursty Trinity Force AD carry in space. So Space Falls, we were talking about Space's laning phase issues. Suddenly in the 2v2, he's dying with no other pressure. Yeah, he's been dying a lot in lane today. Very odd. And will this be the end of the turret? Maybe one more wave here. Mickey really wants it. No, he gets it. Mickey doesn't pay. Mickey does have Ignite. Coco with no mana. I believe he might have used one charge of the ultimate. Can't tell right now, but not a big factor. Going to be able to back over to base. So objective done by Anarchy in a couple of ways. They get the 2v2 kill that honestly Space has opened himself up to. They take the outer turret. Already an instant improvement, despite whatever the gold lead might suggest to you. The slight, of course, slender gold lead from CJ Enters. Yeah, but Anarchy has the pressure onto the top side right now. Even though Ixu died, the tower's still getting low. and. We haven't really addressed the Spirit Visage done by Shy. One of the nice things, and why I don't think that 
having running AD champions in top lane is good against Chen is because you have a shorter window to punish his wave clear. And I see the replay uh, Space here. just gets grabbed. And it's the minigun bomb. He changes from rocket to minigun, just power down damage on Space. Great Nothing lantern. you can do. You needed to flash earlier, I think, from Space to open up distance. Finally flashes, but it's far, far too late. You need to force out the rocket launcher because you're cutting the damage of the Jinx pre-crit by a consistent amount. Lantern in for Lyra, but no follow-up. So, Shai has to get back to the point. Shai spirit has visage. to get the, the Spirit Visage, can't get the Sunfire Cape. Without Sunfire Cape, he can't push forward. That means that Anarchy is able to play a more aggressive laning phase. So, playing those AP champions against Shen, generally the better option. I don't think he was honestly being pressured enough in lane to finish the Spirit Visage, so you have to think, okay, si Bami Cinder versus Kapi, the Spirit Visage. One thing you can say is cooldown reduction, so maybe it's to make plays around the map. Ambition trying his best to make plays, but I've been there this game. Well, they know that the Ari can make it down there really fast right now, so they can't overcommit to some of these ganks, especially with Lyra right there. And there you go, nice steal by Coco onto the Scuttle Crab, getting him a little bit of extra gold in his pocket and some nice vision. Only slightly behind 10 CS a minute. Of course, once he picks up the Rune Glaive with the Purple Smite, much faster. Their ambition uh, tussling, and Mickey's going to be there first. Yeah, ambition has to back off with that tunnel immediately, wisely. Not trying to contest that. They really can't play on the bottom side of the map right now. As you can see, CJ has to play a very defensive game. Definitely Anarchy doing a much better job of applying pressure and punishing CJ for this team composition than they did in game one. They keep tossing ambitions low. We're looking for the stun. It registers, but crucially gets through. Just a nice little stun right at the end of the tunnel. The first responding has the ultimate again. Will we see another steal? Oh, it hits Snowflower, but doesn't get the low Lyra. And isn't going to get the... Oh, steals the red buff. There you go. Nice little burst. So Lyra had to use his smite, and Mad Life now coming in. There's a Shen ultimate. I think he's just going to be bounced back and chain CC'd again. What a good Shen ult from Shy. Just fantastic follow up on that little play. By far the best volleyball duo on the CJN side. It's Shy and Mad Life again. We keep talking about this. They're the ones making the plays. It was really nice synergy there to just headbutt Mickey from Hope, Mickey from any sort of teammates. And now they get some pressure, and now CJ looking to pick up their first objective of the game. Well, it was just such smooth crowd control. Mickey didn't have time to spirit rush, didn't even have time to flash. You get the pull, you get the headbutt, and then you have this Shen taunting you with sufficient damage to take you out. So pretty difficult execution on something like an Ari, but they make it work. The sort of spiking play is what they need from Ambition. That's the thing, is that they need to be getting this. We need to be talking about the jungle support duo, and we just can't do that. The Ambition has two kills this game, but it's not, I mean, it doesn't really. It's a misnomer. Yeah, reflect his play all that much. Anarchy have good early power spikes. Leandri's Torment, buffed on patch 5.13. Happy to approach that early, and okay, Shai has picked up the resist, so he's at least going to be able to deal with the damage in lane, but he's not doing much apart from having cooldown reduction. That's the only thing that finishing the Spirit Visage got him was a little bit more uh, above better laning phase in terms of just being able to stay sustained, but realistically, the 10% CDR, he wants to keep making plays around the map, especially now that he's hit level 11. Yeah, big moment for him. Can he use this next Stand United to do even more? Is Stand United and Teleport in what? 35, 40 seconds. It's absolutely ridiculous the way you can play. I mean, he already has the global advantage. Uh, Iksu going to be able to take down this tower. Shy decides he's not going to fight it out, just wants to get back. Doesn't have any wards in his own jungle right now, making things a bit dicey. So he chooses the safe path to give up that tower rather than suffer a gank. Not really a problem. He knows that his team is going to be super strong in the late game. It's a lot of Interesting questions about taking out that outer tower as Lyra face checks a cow. Mickey again has to use the spirit rush. Ambition comes through. Nice knock up. Mickey is low. Mickey dies. The follow up auto actually kills him once he gets over the wall. So Mickey once again, Mad Life is just showing up. Coco low. Coco does have the Shen ult on him, so that's going to turn around. Lyra forced to use the chrono break to get back to his turret. Flashing back to safety. 
geometric plays that all this displacement that CJ has pulled off have been just a wonder to watch. And it's caught Mickey out twice now. He's the one that had the pressure on mid. Can't really say the pressure's transitioned to anything when this is what we see all, two games in a row. 43 CS out of nowhere, exploded through by Ezreal. And Ambition's, uh, his positioning right there for that play was spot on. He just really caught the, jeez, that damage. He just caught the Ari at the end of the punt for the chain CC, and that's going to be a turret in the end. They have total vision control over the bottom side right now. They will be taking this blue buff, Coco getting on to the other side of the wall, and there is the smite and the finisher, so everything going for CJ now. They've broken this game wide open. Just playing around Runeglaive as your super, super well. Mickey got the turret down, but it hasn't meant anything at all, Monte Cristo, and Honestly, this might actually be a faster finish than the previous game, because remember, Anarchy were ahead by 1,000, 2,000 gold last game consistently. The gold gap was never there. It's actually starting to extend right now for CJ Antis. Yeah, this is a good situation. Ambition just going to tag Lyra for a moment. Time Winder not really doing much to him. Mickey is now on a space assassination mission, but Mad Life is there. There is a pink ward, hasn't seen him, and we could see this space gonna come through, and he gets taken low, but it's just not enough damage. Mickey can't commit with Mad Life there. He has too much trauma from what Chai did to him earlier. So he will just back off. Nice attempt at a pick. They've gotta do something to get back into this game. I must admit, the moment you said space assassination mission, my head went to different <laughs> places. I was thinking about some of the great horror films of our time. But, uh, horror films for space assassination mission? Isn't I that mean, more like an action film? Sure, could be a bit of horror there. Jump scares, come on. Jump scares with the space assassination. That's what I was looking for. Is speaking of getting a little bit, is caught, gonna back away. Should I flashed for that. But mm. I've got a flash out of Ixu in return. He's just working his top flash mechanics. They're on point. He's nailed it. Coco finding jungle camps everywhere. The CS, I don't know where it comes from, but he certainly knows exactly where to find it. Where does it come from? I mean, especially because he was losing. We watched him lose a lot of CS to turret. We were looking at that mid lane. We were seeing that Mickey was pushing him up. I was watching Coco not nail the perfect CS, but guess what? He is still very far ahead now, and still a little bit of damage on everybody. Lyra loses a health potion, maybe like 400 units from base. Mickey actually taunted into turret range, misses the charm as well. Shai doesn't really have any semblance of damage, but he maxes E second, so this might be a kill. Okay then. <laughs> well, Equalizer goes down. It's a day late and a dollar short underneath that turret. And likewise, Mickey, uh, I guess getting a little bit surprised by Shy down in that bottom side. He had the spirit message already. There was pretty much zero assassination potential on him. And in spite of the fact that Mickey, Mickey dies without using Flash again. Mickey hasn't used Flash in a really long time now. Gotta wonder if a little tilt is happening for Mickey because he could have gotten out of that situation. Instead he's just a heap of dead tails in the bottom lane. Coco goes for the old in play, has the old again. Speaking of ults, puts it through, misses. Shy's there once again with the taunt, and they pick up the kill. It's really amazing to me how good Shy is at Shen. He knows the limit so well, he can pick up the kills, he knows how to all in, and he's just always on point across the map with these uh, ultimates to help his teammates out. And he helps his teammate picks on Shen. You talk about the timing that, that, re that it requires for Mad Life to actually get on top of somebody with Alistair and then for Shen to immediately appear. That is some really impressive synergy and coordination play. Those big anachronisms where, look, not a bad teleport place. Coco's going for a kill assassination <laughs> mission of himself. Not in space. And he's definitely going to die. Well, so Flower, that was hilarious. Was it worth? You will pay for that. <laughs> Extending deep into the enemy base, lands the hook, and as he collapses on the ground, mutters worth. Look, if it gets a couple of extra <laughs> viewers to his stream, probably worth. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, yeah, this game has definitely escalated quickly. We're gonna see the replay. This was the kill we missed on the top side of the map. Is Lyra chain CC to death? Yep, decided to use the Chrono Break. There was, yeah, there was parallel conversions, but ended up dying anyway, in spite of the fact that he landed the stun onto the W. And now CJ racking up the kills, racking up the gold lead, and 
Starting to move for the Dragon, although the first Dragon was taken very late in this game, so it's going to be quite a long time before we actually see all of those stacks brought to bear on the enemy. I think the game's going to be over by then, Monte Cristo. I think you're right. I think that is probably a good call. CJ will not dawdle, I do not think, when it comes to waiting out those fifth dragon, although Anarchy going for the Desperation okay. Baron. Nice call, they see space on the bottom side. No reason not to do this, this is a slip up by CJ. All right, doing damage, but they're not doing that much damage. They haven't hit massive item time, and Shy's gonna get there soon. It's down to 4,000 health. Go Shy, can you be the hero? Here comes the True Shot Barrage. Coco takes out Rumble immediately. Anarchy will get the Baron, but at what cost? Double taunt right there from Shed. Lear gonna pop over the wall, but guess who's waiting in his ambition? Double kill, Chrono Break back into the pit. Coco is there and waiting. Triple kill now for Coco. Mickey, he's gonna try and get away. Spirit Rush will save him from this fight. He's got his flash, he's not going to die. Uh, Snowflower is just going to recall and then die to Coco, who gets a delayed Quadra. And Space will get the bottom inhibitor. Well, you can, you can see with the taunts <laughs> that uh, Anarchy have definitely put the cue in the rack this game. They've, uh, <laughs> they've had enough. The Space spent this whole time, what, Swift pushing a couple of turrets, maybe? Uh, he's gotten two so far and an inhibitor. And now he gets a surrender. Well, that was abrupt. 25 minutes, Anarchy surrenders to CJ Entis. They fall to that 9K deficit. Nice attempt at a Sneak Baron, but it is sniffed out when they couldn't see anybody defending the Tier 2 at the bottom side. And that prompts CJ to immediately start pushing through with that True Shot Barrage. Two impressive Root Glaive games from Coco, but I think you gotta give the MVP to Shy that game. He was definitely on point. I can't wait to see those highlights if he gets it. Absolutely, it was the volleyball play with Mickey twice in a row that really railroaded what was an excellent laning phase for the Ari. Took out the turret like she needed to. It felt like Anarchy had made the smart adjustments to really become a factor specifically